MYOG stands for make your own gear. But not only, it also stands for modify your own gear. That's why you see me standing here wearing not my own gear, but made by Scandinavian Explorer. And that's why you see a bunch of jackets that are also not functional clothing lab jackets. Because what I'm going to finally delve into today is modifications of garments that you might have already. As a modifications that will improve their functionality or if personally for you, because you, you can choose out of multiple uh, modifications to apply to a garment you have based on what functionality you want. So this is the very first uh, jacket that I'm going to modify. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And the following modifications will be uh, done to this jacket. First of all, I will make the removable sleeves. Uh, just basically to make it short sleeve. So I will install two zippers here with zipper flaps be beneath. It's a simple one. More, a w more weird one. <laughs> I will uh, make a removable back and sleeve panel. Uh, that means I will run a zipper here, all the way here horizontally and uh, along the back of the neck. So basically all this part, the sleeves and the upper and middle back will be totally removable. So you can unzip it while keeping the hood, the front part and the skirt of the jacket in one piece. Uh, basically why? Because uh, as you might have noticed, I'm quite obsessed with ventilation of the back. Uh, but at the same time, with keeping warm the core, keeping warm around this area. So that's why it's this modification. But uh, again, because I would be showing this specific modification, it doesn't mean you will not be able to apply it uh, to making some other weird part of your garment removable. Like whatever part you want to remove, uh, you can make removable. I think after seeing the generally the techniques that I'm going to be using for that. As well, apart from removing things, uh, I would show how to make things smaller and to make them more elasticized. Basically making them smaller, not by just removing the, some volume of the garment, but by applying the elastics on the inside so that the garment sits closer to you. It doesn't change the uh, volume of the garment per se. Uh, it stays like this, but it just sits closer to you. Um, while staying elastic, so it can still accommodate some bigger garments underneath. Uh, but when there is nothing underneath, it will be sitting closer and therefore it would be warmer. And uh, why you might want to use it if, it is, if uh, the garment you are having is bigger than your size. Because for example, this is extra large. It will allow you to, um, to make garments smaller where you need it to be smaller without uh, needing to know at all anything about pattern making, about cutting the garments. Uh, you would not have to think in which part to remove and how much. You will just apply uh, elastics on the inside of the garment to make it shrink and sit closer to your body where you need it. So I would be applying this to the sleeves because they are bigger than what I need. And I would be applying it uh, likely somewhere uh, in the section along the middle back so that the whole uh, coat sits a little closer to me and uh, the warmth is uh, retained more efficiently. And additionally to all this more large scale modification, I will um, be adding functional uh, parts to the hood because as often on a cheaper down jackets that you can find in stores like Uniqlo or something more like mass market shop, uh, there, are, there is no adjustment on the hood. So basically the hood just has a, an elastic around the face and that's it. You haven't gotten a choice of uh, how to wear. So if you, if you zip the hood, or if, the, if you zip the coat all the way in, you will be just like this. Like even if it can be riding down into your eyes and all that. Basically I will remove the elastic from the edge uh, and I will install um, cord channels uh, with cords that will allow me to adjust uh, the hood and make it more functional. So with all this, uh, it's pretty, it's a lot of modifications to go through. I will start now and I will be sh documenting the process on the way so that you can apply it to garment you already own.
And I almost forgot to uh, tell you about another, the weirdest modifications that I'm going to make. And it's totally experimental because I'm not sure how it will come out, but it's something that I was thinking for ages as well about. So basically I call this kind of modification is turning the uh, skirt into shorts. Uh, so in this case, it's not a skirt uh, as it is. It's a skirt of the, like, skirt of the coat. Uh, but how to turn it into shorts? Well, that's a question. I'm still not sure. But the idea is that first of all, I will replace this zipper with the zipper that can be opened from the bottom as well. I would replace this one-way zipper with two-way zipper. And then uh, I will have to make a slit up the uh, center back. And in the slit, I will have to add a panel that then will be connecting with the front in, or, in order to create kind of inseam panel. It would not be perfectly connected because, I mean, it would not be perfectly tight connection because I don't think I would be using zipper to connect the back to the front because this is too cumbersome. Uh, it probably would be snaps, so some wind will still be able to go through. Nevertheless, I think this functionality could be quite crucial for riding bicycle because when you ride bicycle in this nice long coat, uh, that otherwise protects you from the wind whole area. Your legs are in this position and both at the same time. So the wind can easily like go in and it's like essentially like wearing something like this. There is no difference between wearing this jacket, this length or this length if you're riding the bicycle uh, in the terms of how well this area is getting protected from the cold, from upcoming cold wind. So that's an uh, idea that I really, really want to try. And one more reason why to modify the gear uh, is because it's much less time investment. So I can try finally this idea because building it from scratch just to see if I can find a good solution for this uh, skirt to short conversion uh, was, I always, I never have time for that. But because I found this code on eBay for cheap, I uh, don't need to build the basic structure of the garment. I don't need to fill it with down painfully each chamber. Uh, I don't need to design that, cut it, and it's all here. And I can just uh, dive into exploration of what functional features I can make. So uh, that's generally why I also started buying this used down jackets of eBay uh, to experiment more freely and faster without so much investment so that I can um, it, so I can test more weird and wild ideas that otherwise get pushed most of the time to the bottom of the list because they're too much to spend much time on. So uh, without further ado, let's see about the first modifications. So the first thing you need to do when you want to make something removable is to define where the line uh, would be running, where the line um, of zipper would be running. So for the sleeves, I marked it uh, along this length. And uh, for the removable sleeve is the simplest one because it would be a straight line and there is already a straight stitching line along all sleeves and it's horizontal. It doesn't have any curves. It doesn't have any sh corners. Uh, so it's just straightforward. But even if there is no uh, stitching lines on the garment, sleeves of which you want to make removable, it doesn't matter because the sleeves are quite uniform most of the time and you can just draw the line that would be perpendicular more or less to both edges and it would work fine for installing zippers. So this is uh, about the sleeves. After defining the line where you are going to install the zipper, uh, you'll need to measure the length of the opening so that you can find appropriate length of the zipper uh, to use for this piece and the uh, length of the zipper flap uh, to be used with the zipper. Stretch it, uh, the garment, as much as you uh, can because uh, especially with poofy garments, uh, it's not so straightforward what the length would be. So here I have 19 and a half centimeters uh, by two. It's uh, 39 centimeters of the length of the um, opening and now um, if you don't have a 39 centimeter uh, long zipper first of all you can adjust the zipper length yourself uh, and you can see my tutorial about zipper modifications uh, generally speaking <laughs> and um, also if you have a zipper that is uh, just one two centimeters shorter 
then your desired length it's also okay because um, in this case we would be installing the uh, zipper flap beneath so even if there is a one two centimeter gap uh, in the opening of the zipper or be between the end between the uh, start and the end of the zipper when it's closed it's still okay um, because it's anyway impossible to make this connection extremely sealed so there would be a little bit point where the draft could come in uh, but I don't think it matters that much really because it's not a super thick down jacket for going to Everest or north or south pole so a little draft uh, coming in is is just like nothing so we can disregard it so we need a, a zipper for this specific case 39 centimeters like 37 to 39 centimeters long I'll have to sacrifice much longer zippers and shorten them to 40 centimeters because I don't have anything in this length, but it's okay. Um, so we have uh, these two zippers. Um, and uh, so we need in them in 39 centimeters or a little bit less. And the zipper flap length that we would need is 39, it's more than 39 centimeters. It's 39 centimeters plus seam allowance. Uh, which uh, yeah, you can take, it depends on how you're going to manufacture zipper flap, but if you would be using the same zipper flap that I'm using, that uh, you can see the um, tutorial on how to make your generic zipper flap that you can use for projects like this, uh, then I would add probably, uh, yeah, probably two more centimeters. Okay, let's play it safe and make it third, 41 centimeter of zipper flap uh, so that the seam allowance on each side is 10 millimeters and I think I'm going to be joining them in a flat felt seam uh, so that both ends are hidden and it's uh, neat in the end. Uh, so now I will just shorten the zipper, prepare the zipper flaps and uh, we'll be moving to the sewing area to see the installation process. Next step is quite interesting one. Uh, so before, why we are in the sewing area, not in the cutting, because we already know where the line of the zipper would be. Why not to cut it already and start to sew in the zipper? Basically because it's a down garment and whenever you cut something, the down will escape. So we will need to create two stitching lines one two millimeters away from the cutting line so that we before cutting we seal the down inside and then we don't have to chase it around and th that's i think it's simple logical but it's quite crucial steps that might not come to mind uh right away it's a little tricky to uh get into the sleeve but it's kind of okay um because we have a stitching line along which uh we are orienting our zipper i will just create the stitching two stitching rows right next uh, like left and right from this uh, existing line two three millimeters away as i said it doesn't matter which color of the thread you use at this time but i already loaded it with the correct thread color so that further stitching that would be more visible uh, would be already done with the correct one also of course i didn't mention try to, uh, fr before starting try to drive away the down uh, from the la stitching line because we are stitching now next to the stitch existing stitching line it's already kind of uh, there is not much down under the lines where you are going to be stitching but still just push it away so even even the little amount of down uh, gets uh, in the garment so when you are cutting there is no nothing escapes basically nothing is lost oh it's actually nice that we have quite bright lining on this garment because it would be more clear for you to see that now we have three stitching lines uh, there around the uh, area where we are going to cut it. So now uh, perfectly what I would do is I would do this on the second sleeve but because I'm doing this operation first time together with you here uh, I will keep the second sleeve for later because maybe some improvement would be found along the way and I would understand that something is more efficient or better in the term of process so I will keep um, working with this sleeve and uh, see how it goes maybe the process would be the same maybe not so basically next step is to cut along the central line along the initial existing line that we uh, have on the garment in this case in case of the sleeve or along the line that would line between two stitching lines that you have just created 
just carefully pinch it to make a start. It's, it's not uh, tremendously important uh, not to cut in your stitching lines, but it will just save you from down escape. You should just try to stay careful. Actually, I think a lot of uh, the people who are into sewing started from modifying what they had. And that is where first steps into yeah, on the sewing journey uh, is modification. Uh, so it's kind of nice to uh, be back at that. So now we have a sleeve separately, also exciting, and a short sleeve. So just see. Oh, looks quite nice, the length. And then we have the sleeve. Actually, because this sleeve is symmetric, uh, I mean that like when you turn it inside out, it's absolutely the same shape uh, as it was. I think I will be installing zipper so that it zips like this. So we have this color, uh, color blocking situation. Oh yeah, I think this, uh, this coat will be really nice. Uh, so now next step, uh, what we will do is I'll prepare the zipper, but that step I don't need to show to you. And I prepare the zipper flap, which I will show briefly. And then we will be installing it. It's quite fast. So I cut the zipper to length. And uh, usually uh, how I finish the end so that the slider doesn't slide off. Um, the end of the zipper is I use special zipper top stoppers and metallic little parts with teeth that are installed here. But uh, because it's really hard to find those, even for me, like I found only one source of it and it's, it's scarce. Uh, I will use for this um, project zippers, uh, zipper finishes. Uh, but because it's really hard to find those pieces and they're too specialized for somebody to have them, I think, at hand, I will just do the simple um, things that anybody could do with sewing machine, basically. Um, I left five uh, millimeter seam allowance here. So I will stitch back and forth on the small uh, seam, a small stitch length, uh, which is, all, I have the range of four. So I will go for two, not one, because it would be too much. I will stitch all, um, a lot back and forth, creating some top stopper uh, out of thread, essentially. Uh, at, yeah, at the top of the zipper. So I don't think you will be able to clearly see it, but maybe later on when I show the close up of the installed zipper, you'll see it. it is, it's also done with dark thread. Doesn't matter. You'll see it later. So uh, now both zippers has this stop stopper thing so that uh, the slider doesn't come off. And now what I like to do is not something that I often see, but because we are not doing this uh, heavy duty production here, we are doing one by one garment, we can afford paying attention to the smallest of details, which is removing the zipper spiral above the top stopper. Basically, so that the zipper tape that we are going to, uh, the, like the end of zipper tape that we are going to hide inside the seam does not have this rigid part, uh, but it's more flexible. Uh, so basically what I do is uh, I burn a little bit the edges so that they don't fray while I'm uh, removing the, the spiral. You can also see how to remove the spiral. I think it's in a little more close up in my big zipper tutorial on YouTube channel. Mm, but uh, basically what you do is uh, just with the seam ripper, um, the zipper coil is attached to the zipper tape itself with a thread. Uh, so you just, you, you, if you see, if you look closely at any zipper, you, you will see it at any coil zipper. So you can just start from the top and find this zipper, find this um, thread, uh, cut one, then pull apart zipper tape from the um, zipper coil itself and just one by one go until you reach the, the top stopper, the stitching at the top stopper. Ah, and then what you would need to cut off this, you can cut it off uh, the, the coil uh, with the conventional scissors, but I use the fla flash cutter um, that I will bring shortly. 
and just carefully cut it as close as possible to the our stitched top stopper. So now we have very uh, neatly finished uh, end of the zipper where the slider doesn't slide off and where we have flexible tape to hide it in the future seam. What I actually like to do is to fold it on itself like a triangle a little bit and then fold it again and then stitch here so that it is ready for installation and we don't need to think about hiding this uh, edge or during installation so we can just uh, concentrate on the insta installing of the zipper itself. Here we have a zipper ready for installation. So here is uh, 41 centimeters of zipper flaps that is needed for one sleeve. Uh, this is uh, that generic zipper flaps that uh, I mentioned before and you can find the link to the tutorial under this video somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to join this um, in a circular way so that it's just like a sleeve uh, and I'm going to because we have these two row edges I'm going to join it like I mentioned before with a flat felt seam so that the edges are neatly stored inside <laughs> so here we have our zipper flap ready for the installation so now we are ready to install the zipper almost. We, we have our zipper prepared, we, have our zipper, we have our zipper flap prepared, uh, and we have the cut in the garment itself. Before, though, we proceed with attaching the zipper, there is one more operation that, is, that needs to be done. Uh, but before this operation can be done, we need to define something. And the, we need to define the seam allowance that we are going to use when attaching the zipper to this part. Basically, uh, if you want to keep the same dimensions of the garment after you install the zipper so that they are equal to the dimensions that a garment had before uh, you did any modification, the following way would be to take the width of your zipper tape or whatever you are installing. Maybe you would be installing, I don't know, reflective tape or whatever tape you are going to be installing. Uh, measure the width of this tape divided by four and that's your seam allowance because basically the example on the example of this uh, first of all believe me that works <laughs> then try it out uh, and you'll see it works but I will just show uh, tell it on the example of this so zipper tape the width of the zipper uh, that is number three coil zipper is 2.4 centimeters we divide it by four. Uh, our seam allowance is six millimeters. We, if we attach on both sides of the zipper something with seam allowance of six millimeters, what is left in between the attached parts is 1.2 centimeters, which is two times 0.6 millimeter. Uh, which is equal to what we just taken from the garment. So we've taken from the garment six millimeters on one side, six millimeters on, the, on another side, and we after attach uh, and we attach the zipper in a way that the uh, width of the zipper that is between the parts compensates for the seam allowances that we've taken away from the garment. Now, in uh, this case, it's not that important actually. Uh, if um, we are keeping the dimension extremely the same, because if you lose or gain five millimeters in the length of the sleeves, uh, you're not going to notice that, that much. 
But uh, believe me, in some other cases, it is more crucial uh, to keep the dimensions the same. As, for example, um, if you install the zipper, in the, only in the part of the garment, it is not circularly uh, going around all the sleeve. If you just want to make an opening, or for that matter, if you want to install a pocket somewhere, Yes, if you want to install a pocket somewhere on the existing garment, that's exactly the same calculations you will, be ha you will have to do because, uh, he, because the zipper would not be running all along some uh, cut that you are having, but only along the part of the garment, then you want to keep uh, the zipper after installation flat uh, with the rest of the garment. So you have to keep the same dimensions that you have just taken away from the garment. So this is um, the way to calculate. Divide the width of whatever you're installing by four, and that's your seam allowance. So you don't have to think about more. So why we calculated it now? Because uh, the next step, before, the last step before applying and assembling everything together is to finish the edges of the sleeve uh, because it's not nice to st keep them raw. It, you can keep them raw if you're lazy or if you don't care that much. Not much down would be leaking. It, it probably would not get destroyed over time from this, but it can, maybe, possible. But anyway, uh, I, will, I, I would not uh, keep them like this. So we need to know the seam allowance that we would be taking away from this part so that our finish of the edge is within the seam allowance so that it's not visible after we attach a zipper. Uh, there are two ways to finish the edge that is appropriate in this case. It's either to finish it with binding tape of some kind, bias tape, gross grain tape, or to use the overlock machine. Um, I'm going to use overlock machine because it's easier to control the widths and this is like five, we need to be within six millimeters. So let's say we need a finished width of the seam to be five millimeter and to find bias tape or gross grain tape that would be resulting into this width uh, is trickier. Uh, I don't have bias tape uh, that would be five millimeter finished or gross grain ribbons that would be five millimeter finished. So it's easier to use overlock machine. If you don't own overlock machine and don't have gross grain ribbon or bias tape that will result in such a narrow finish, uh, one way that is a little more time consuming, um, but very, very nice and neat is to create your own tape. It doesn't have to be bias tape. Uh, basically, like, like here in the garment, the, all the edges are finished. In most of the jackets, all the edges are finished with, it is with bias tape, but because this edge is straight, you can use just, just tape that is cut in a regular manner uh, along the or edge of the fabric you have. So basically you will need to cut the strip. The width of the strip will have to be four times five millimeter. Uh, which means 20 millimeters and uh, the length of the edge that you need to cover. Okay, you will calculate it, but basically 20 millimeter width, pass it through the uh, folding device that is used for making bias tape, and you can use it same for this tape. Uh, you can actually also see my huge tutorial about making your own ultralight bias tape, and there I'm featuring that device, so you can get fam familiarize yourself on how to use it, or Google it, you'll find tons of other tutorials as well on this topic. Uh, so make, you can make your own tape, that would be five millimeter in the finished width, and then uh, finish these um, edges. Time consuming, but really, really neat. I'll go with a quicker way because I do have overlock machine there behind me. So, so now we have our sleeve finished and um, we are ready to install. There are two more aspects that I need to talk about before we start. Uh, first, uh, before installing, we need to choose the place where the zipper would start and end. The most logical place is somewhere here because it's a place that is accessible to you, that you can operate, that you can see. Uh, so, because in order to engage two parts of the separating zipper, you need to see them. Uh, so, just uh, wear your garments and see, uh, mark in whatever preferred way you have with a piece of soap or with a uh, with a pin, 
market with a pin, pin it, mm, and then transfer it to the corresponding part uh, that is going to be attached to. Um, but the second aspect is which direction the zipper would be running. Um, basically here, I have a jacket. It's the first jacket I've made right away with uh, removable sleeves. Uh, and I can show you an example here of uh, two different directions in which a zipper on the sleeve can be opened. Let me just put it on quickly. If uh, there would be right-handed zipper and left-handed zipper, we can just choose, um, we can just do symmetric uh, sleeves, but because most of the zippers are for right-handed people, meaning that uh, I don't know. I think it's just one handed. It's like, I don't know if it's, this is the best for right handed people, but basically you, you put this little thing in the slider, holding it with the right hand. I guess that was decided at some point that that's the most optimal one. Uh, so most of the zippers are opening like this with a slider stain on the left side. And basically, um, you have two options of, uh, uh, where the zipper would be going. Either when you're opening the zipper, it would be going under the arm and then over the arm, or it would be going first over the arm and then under the arm. Essentially, not much difference. There, there is not much difference in that because you will have to be doing both operations, putting the sleeve on and taking it off. So um, essentially, you would be using both movements, both under and over and over and under. Um, so there is no, you don't have to choose which action is better. Uh, but the important aspect here is that when you remove the sleeve, on which part of the garment you want the slider to stay? I prefer it to stay uh, on the removed part of the garment so that when this part of the sleeve are removed, there is nothing hanging here. I think it's nicer like that. But that made me install the zipper in two different directions because basically all the zippers are one-handed, one-sided. If there would be two, like uh, if there would be two different sided zippers, I could install it so it's uh, the same movement to open, same movement to close. But uh, I preferred uh, the symmetry in the movement to the symmetry in the um, not having the slider on any of the sides. Actually, keeping the slider on one of the sides can be good because it will help you clearly understand which sleeves go on which side. Because now once I remove it, if the sleeves don't have clear marking, I can accidentally zip wrong sleeve on the wrong side and if the sleeve is straight sleeve you wouldn't even notice it that much but this is articulated sleeve so here is more space on this uh, along this uh, seam and less space along this seam so it curves and now it curves in the wrong direction but then you, when zipping like this you might not notice so it's up to you either choose uh, to have no sliders on either of the sleeves when the sleeves are removed or choose to have a slider only on one so that when you are attaching the sleeves back uh, to the garment, you cannot attach left to right and right to left. And actually, even though I don't like the sliders, I think the second option is more functional. So on this jacket, I'll go with that option. Uh, now, as you have decided uh, what uh, option to follow, you finally can uh, install the zipper to the sleeve. Uh, first, I will install, install top part of the zipper and then attach the zipper flap as well. And then I will install the bottom part. Um, I will install zipper to the bottom part of the sleeve. Uh, so in this case, uh, it doesn't matter on which I will keep the slider on. It's just if I run the zipper in the same direction, let's say clockwise, um, then it, inevitably on one of the sleeves that will result in the uh, slider stain on the garment. So uh, I have the, my starting mark and I will just pin the 
zipper within the seam allowance. Now, so I chose to have a little gap between the start and the end of the zipper. That's also uh, actually on the example of the previous jacket that I've shown to you. It's easier uh, than to to put to put the another side of the zipper to uh, to the corresponding side of it, so that there is nothing uh, right next to this piece that you need to approach from below. So if the zipper would be uh, all the way like butt to butt, then it would be a little bit on the way of uh, zipping the part. So like having one one and a half centimeter in this case is not a problem. So now we will just stitch it with the seam allowance of six millimeters. I didn't press record apparently when uh, stitching the zipper and zipper flap, but it's straightforward. I've pinned it, I stitched it to six millimeter seam allowance, and then I stitched the flap four millimeter seam allowance, uh, just because um, for the flap not to get caught in the zipper or when the zipper is uh, when the zipper slider is running along the zipper tape, uh, I noticed from my experience that it's better if it's a little farther away. Uh, now maybe I'll put top stitching, uh, row of top stitching here to prevent the fabric of the main garment from catching uh, on the zipper as well. But first I will attach the other part of the zipper to the sleeve and see if it's actually getting caught. Because if it's not, maybe it's okay to keep it like that. Uh, so the same goes for the... Oh, uh, same operation basically first I pin the zipper and um, actually now I will mark the place where the zipper will uh, have to start so that uh, the sleeve is well aligned the lower part of the sleeve is upper part of the sleeve is aligned so I, I'm using the, um, the seam uh, of the sleeve as a reference point for the alignment of this kind so just Hold it and mark with a pin where the zipper should start. And now, now I can actually wear this piece because it's a little cold in my studio. I can wear it while working on this side. Now we attach the zipper, maybe I could iron it so that it sits, uh, so it doesn't uh, flip like that, but maybe, maybe not. So let's just see how it zips on. Moment of truth. Dun, da, da, dun. Dun, da, da, da. Wait, first let's put the slider in the correct position. No. Dun, da, da, da. Dun, da, da, da. Dun, da. Here we go. Uh, looking nice. Let me see it. Oh, this looks so nice. Especially with this change of color now. Oh, so we're not only improving the functionality, but it also looks not so bleak and dark and purpley uh, as it was. So, okay. You see, we have a little gap, but there is this uh, flap. Uh, so it's not a problem. And uh, here we go. We have a removable sleeve. Uh, see, I mean, to remove it, sometimes, um, basically what I do to open the zipper, I kind of catch uh, the sleeve with the arm uh, next, to, like push it towards the body, the arm, so that uh, there is some tension, so the zipper is easier to slide. Oop. Here we go, no sleeve, sleeve. And uh, this doesn't seem to be catching on the zipper, uh, so I would not be doing top stitching. The only thing, I might do is I might stitch in this gap between the zipper and uh, and the star just to keep this part that we have overlocking stitch here uh, from folding also maybe I'll keep it like this and see actually how it behaves uh, in the long run and if it's if I notice that it can be caught or starts turning inside out uh, or start like be visible then I maybe around the stitch here but as it is now, I don't need to do any more. So I don't think I've run into any anything I would want to change uh, about the location of the zipper or 
the assembly order. So I'll do the same for the second sleeve. And then we will move on to next modifications, um, which will be the removable back panel. <laughs> back panel and sleeves at the same time. Quite excited about that. <laughs> 